Hello, my name is Jason Dragon. I work for a company called Emerald Computers. I happen to actually own that company. About a year ago, we started this project where we would mine for Ethereum, which is a cryptocurrency. Over that year, I've built many, many mining machines. Um, I've sold these mining machines. I've also actively traded cryptocurrencies, actively bought and sold. Um, Ethereum, Bitcoin, um, I traded for a little while a multitude of other cryptocurrencies. Um, I've also used cryptocurrencies to make purchases on the internet, uh, send money internationally, and do many, many other things. Today I'm going to go through and kind of give a quick tutorial to all the questions that people ask me all the time. Um, Ethereum in the last couple of weeks has really gone up in price. Um, Bitcoin has become a very hot topic and due to all of this I've been getting a lot of people talking to me about Ethereum, about Bitcoin to the point where I've been talking about it for two to three hours every single day to various people saying the same things over and over and over again. So what I've decided to do is make this video and pretty much show you right now how I do what I do with Ethereum and how I do what I do with other cryptocurrencies. So first off, before we do anything else, Ethereum is a token a cryptocurrency that's stored either on your computer or in a wallet on the internet. It's money that you have and it can be divisible up to point and oh, nine, ten zeros out. So if you want to send somebody a penny or one one hundredth of a penny, you can do that with Ethereum and also with Bitcoin. Bitcoin came out a long time ago, maybe what, five, six years ago. Um, it had a lot of volatile things. Bitcoin takes a while to do a transaction, and Ethereum is much faster. Um, you could do an Ethereum transaction in about one-tenth the time, or even less, than it takes you to do a Bitcoin transaction. Um, Ethereum is faster. I think Ethereum is a little bit more reliable, and definitely Ethereum is a lot easier to mine. It's easier to mine and to make a profit because they made it harder to mine because they required an actual computer with a nice graphics card with lots of RAM to mine for it. Bitcoin originally was like that, but because its calculation was so much simpler, people started building these machines specifically designed to do nothing but mine for Bitcoin. They call those ASICs machines. And they built so many of these machines so economically that the vast majority of mining is now done with these machines. And it's not even worth the cost of hardware or electricity to mine without those machines. So you really, really need to have an awesome machine like that. So here we are, we're on the Emerald Computers webpage for the Ethereum project. Um, you go to emeraldcomputers.com slash Ethereum, or you can actually just type in slash ETH, it works fine. Uh, Ethereum, the, the currency of the future and the ultimate investment. It actually is a very, very good investment. Right now, you could buy a machine for $1,000 that will... I'll explain later, but it'll generate 45 units of work. Those units of work are called mega hash. For uh, we'll explain a little bit more of that later. Um, you can buy that for about a thousand dollars with that much mega hash, based upon the current um, network availability and all that. You're going to get about three Ethereum per month. So at the current value, that's somewhere you know it's well over a hundred bucks. So you invest a thousand, you're going to spend about fifteen, twenty dollars a month on electricity for this computer, but it's going to generate a hundred, maybe a hundred and fifty dollars of return, and that's right now with today's prices. And I believe strongly that the prices are going to go way up. There's so much upside to this because the more you, there's only so much. And there's a little bit more created every single day via the mining process, but 
the amount that's created every single day is almost is minuscule versus the amount of extra uses being created for Ethereum every single day. The amount of people using it is pretty much skyrocketing. It's about double what it was even just a couple months ago. And the more people who use it, the more uses for it, the higher the price will go and the higher everything will go. So enough talking about me. Let me show you a little bit of what we do. So first off, you mine for Ethereum using special software on your computer. The software I'm using is a little bit outdated, probably. Um, I got this mostly, most of the parts of this are from the middle of 2016, with the um, batch file being a little bit more updated. The actual miner I'm using is from 613, 2016. There are some newer miners that are more efficient. Um, I There are double miners that actually mine two currencies. A lot of that I had difficulty with and it was crashing and I'd rather have a miner that mines 24-7 that never stops mining than a miner that's 5 or 10 percent more efficient but has 10 or 20 percent downtime because if you add it all up it's better to just not have downtime and I don't like downtime. So this is the basic program right here. We run ETH miner. Um, I have a couple libraries right here, OpenCL, because I use an um, AMD-based video card. I threw these libraries in here because without those libraries, we were having some issues. Uh, this particular miner, I used this batch file right here. And if you read the batch file, um, I wrote this. This batch, file is, this batch file is to mine directly to your pool. So I use a website called ethminer.org. And this ethminer executable, dash G, tells it to use your graphics card. Um, US1 is the United States number one server for ethminer.org. Uh, 444 is the port. Uh, dash O is telling me that the address is coming up next. So here is my Ethereum address. That's the address that my miners will mine and that's the wallet they send the money to. Soon as my ethminer.org account gets to one full Ethereum, it will transfer that Ethereum over to this wallet. And it's going to also put a dot S -S epsilon at the end of it. Epsilon is the name of the computer I'm working on. I also put these little local work um, 128, global work. So this basically tells it to download a little bit more. And it's just a little bit of how it processes uh, when you see the results. Uh, farm recheck tells it to check every 1.2 seconds to see if there's any more. OpenCL forces the OpenCL um, interface, which is AMD. Anyway, you don't need any of that stuff. Um, FS basically means if this server, US1, doesn't work, it's going to connect to US2. Um, this is actually all one line. If I make it bigger, it goes like that. And then pause means so that if... I am in the window and it crashes. If I didn't have the pause there, then it would actually just completely exit and I wouldn't see why it crashed. I want to see why it crashed. So now if the program crashes, it'll say pause, it'll wait, and then I'll be able to do that. So what happens when you run this file right here? Well, when you run this file, it opens up a command prompt and it runs. So this is what an actively mining software looks like right there. Um, the video card that I have in this computer is uh, MSI R9390X. That video card, as you can tell, um, each clock cycle is a, a different amount of time. I have it set to about one second. So sometimes it'll do 27.9, sometimes uh, 30.2. I've only had this up and running for a few minutes. So the, um, it's only actually found five, um, well, I'll call them raffle tickets for now. We'll talk to we'll, they're a little bit more precise later on. Okay, so let me show you what happens when I actually exit this program. Hey, just found another one right there. See, found a solution, submitting to US1, ethminer.org, um, proof of work hash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now it says we found six. So let me close this program. Boom. So... Our computer is not mining anymore. So let me run the mining and show you what it's supposed to look like. So when you first run it, it runs that batch file that I was just talking to you a second ago. Um, 
So it's connected to the server. It gets its first work package real quick. Then it has to make a DAG file. A DAG file is what makes it really, really difficult. Uh, this particular program generates the DAG file each time directly on the GPU and saves it straight into the GPU RAM. The old program I used to use before this would take literally five minutes to generate the DAG file on the CPU and store it on the hard drive. And then it took another minute when you ran it to read it off the hard drive and transfer it over to the GPU. Someone had the genius idea um, of basically putting it where it just renders it directly right onto the GPU. From the GPU to the GPU, never having to mess with your hard drive, never having to mess with your CPU. So this is how I mine on this computer here. Um, this is my actual work computer that I use. Uh, my work computer I use at home. I have a, another computer at work that I also use. And this runs in the background. I can game on the computer and I see no negative speed cause because of the mining. I can game whether with or without the mining. I pretty much get the same frames per second on most of the games I play. The video card does run a lot hotter. And it is a lot noisier when I am mining. Um, that's expected. So, I also can remote into other computers. So, for example, this is my computer at work. Uh, the one we're on right now is called Epsilon, and this is my computer at work called Gamma. Um, Gamma is a lot more I actually use this for a lot more work. It's a lot better. This one only has an RX 480 with 8 gigs of RAM. I don't have it tweaked. I don't have any settings in there. As you see, sometimes I don't have it overclocked. I don't have it underclocked. This is my main server that runs my whole business. I just happen to have one video card running on in the background. I don't want to risk my server having any downtime, so I've done nothing for aggressive set settings. Um, this one's been running long enough. It gets about 24 to 20.9, so you average that out. You're probably looking at about 23 mega hash. It's an RX 480. Um, it's also from MSI, and it also it has 8 gigs of RAM. Um, mine here also has 8 gigs of RAM. So we have these two computers are both at 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, this one's found a lot of answers, uh, 16,430 since the last time it got restarted, which I can't tell you when that was, but it probably was about a month ago. Okay, let me minimize that. We can also use remote desktop to log into, say, let's say one of my silver machines. So my silver machines are these little basic computers. Um, they were actually kiosks. Believe it or not, for Jack in the Box. And I purchased a couple hundred of them about a year ago. And I was going to liquidate them until I found out about mining. And these have a really nice motherboard. They have um, they're a lot of great cooling. And the power supply and the processor and RAM and everything was very much suited towards mining. Um, I can only put one video card on each one. Um, yet again, I like stability, so I want, if there's a failure, I only want one computer to fail. I don't want a whole, you know, video, uh, computer with six video cards to fail. Plus, I got the computers at such a cheap price, it doesn't make sense to do anything but just put one computer in each rig. Um, these, com these ones, all of my silver machines run on um, R9 380 video cards. Uh, Silver 3, I believe, is an MSI card, while most of my cards are EVGA and other different ones. Um, now, you can watch your mining. I think that's all we're going to look at for mining. So you can watch the output of your mining by going to ethermine.org, and then you type in your Ethereum address right there, or you can type it in right there. Um, it gives you the history of the computers that are mining. So currently on this particular account, I have 11, 11 computers mining. So the one that's right here, which is Epsilon, is listed right here. So it met, met, have it, it's a 27.8 mega hash right now. And for the last 24 hours, has averaged 28 mega hash, even though I've taken it down and up a few times uh, to make a couple different versions of this video, but it still runs pretty well. Uh, Gamma, the one that I remoted into a minute ago, uh, it's still doing pretty good. 
Uh, Silver 3 was the last one. It's doing pretty good. Um, the only one I have currently with two video cards is Triggs 2. Um, Triggs 2... Well, I don't think I... Well, I can log in the Triggs 1. Um, shoot. Let me just skip that because I don't know the password. But <laughs> I know the password I've written down somewhere else, but... Um, Triggs 1 and Triggs 2 are owned by a client of mine, and Triggs happens to be his last name. And um, he went off on vacation and needed me to run the computers in my office. And since he had two computers, I basically said, I'm going to monitor it, I'm going to take care of it, I'm going to pay for the electricity. But one computer mines for me and one computer mines for you. So I think that's a pretty fair bet, and that's where we're at right now. On this, you can see the history of each computer and how what it's done for the last day. You can also see up here, the orange line is what the, average, the running 24-hour average, but the blue line is what they actually do. And that's because it's based on luck. You're kind of picking random numbers. There's so much Ethereum that's being given away for free to all the miners every single day, and that Ethereum is divided even, not divided evenly, but it's divided among all the miners. And the way I kind of think about it, I think about it as you're generating raffle tickets. As I said before, the other one submitted 16,000 solutions. A solution is basically a raffle ticket. And we have a few seconds, maybe 10, 20 seconds. It depends on how fast the network's going right now. Sometimes it's even just one second. And all the raffle tickets submitted down there during that time have a chance of winning. Um, and one of those raffle tickets will now be given five pieces of Ethereum. Now, if you did it on your own, it might take you a while to get lucky. It might take you a month. It might take you three months to get enough luck to actually win one piece of Ethereum. So what you do is you join a pool, a group with hundreds or even thousands of other people who are mining. And we all put all of our raffle tickets in together. And we decide on... It, when we when our group wins, so here it is, blocks found per hour. So we're doing pretty good here. You know, our team is getting about 50 to 60, sometimes even over 70 blocks in one hour, which is what we want to see, um, which every time we get a block, that's five Ethereum for us. And that Ethereum, therefore, gets divided evenly among all the people. All, well, among all the people based upon how many raffle tickets you submitted, how much work you did. Right now, there are 7,498 active miners on this server, running a total of 3, 31,405 active computers, active servers. And that's a lot. I only have 11. I've built a lot more than 11. I always put all my customers on ethermine.org. I really like ethermine.org. And if you look at Ethermine's total hash rate is three terahashes. When I first started, they were at about a half a terahash. So they're doing a lot better. They're almost seven times what they were when I started. And each computer does about, as I was showing you before, my computers do in the mega hash. So this computer here is doing about 30 mega hash, 29, 30 mega hash as we go. And you had all 7,000, you know, all 7,500 miners running 31,000 machines. You get three terahash. A lot of these machines, I've noticed, don't do a lot. The number one guy here, he's doing, let's see, 123 gigahash a second. That's insane. So I'm not even doing one gigahash. I'm doing a quarter of one gigahash, and this guy's doing a whole bunch. Now, if you look at him... You know, you could tell, like right here, he's only running 933 nodes. And here, just a little bit later, well, 947. So he has, obviously, connectivity issues, computers going up and down. Um, you know, quite a lot of interesting numbers going on here. You can also see his hash rate. So you can see right here on his numbers that his hash rate is about 125. This is probably one of those big farms, obviously, you know, number 1,356, blah, blah, blah. And you can tell by this number that they're probably running five or maybe six uh, 20 to 30 mega hash video cards in each computer. 
which is kind of an interesting idea. Um, if you're doing it on a million dollar scale like this guy is, I would probably also put five video cards in a computer. It just would save a lot of time and space and effort. Um, if you're doing it on a small scale, you know, anything less than probably three or four hundred mega hash, I would build computers right now probably with just two video cards in it because you don't want to have a your five video card machine go down and now three hours goes by and you don't you're not mining anyway if you want to go to our website ethereumrigs.com this tells you about how to buy an ethereum rig a lot of this is a little bit old um, we do take bitcoin to build an ethereum rig um, right here it says we can build a computer with two video cards. In reality, the computer with two video cards is going to do between about 40 to almost 50 mega hash. Because back when we wrote this, we were using a little bit less cards. A little bit lower quality cards. Now we're using the RX 480s, which are very nice. Uh, for 950 bucks, I'll give you a computer that runs really, really well. Um, well it's going to guarantee at least 35 mega hash. Probably get you about 45 mega hash. Um, that's a very, very good system. It uses about 440 watts of power, according to our testing. Um, we've actually been doing a little bit more testing since I wrote this page. And with the RX 480s, you're probably going to be about 400 watts of power. If you wanted to buy one of these, um, you could just buy it with Ethereum or Bitcoin, or you can call us up. My phone number right here is 623-240-2424. Uh, when you connect to that, you're just going to press 2 for sales. Uh, that'll ring me right up. We are one of the largest computer stores in um, the west half of the Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we have a, a pretty large staff, a large building. Um, I don't really plan on talking about that, so I don't have pictures and such ready. Um, here's another video I took. About half of the people that have purchased Ethereum rigs from us have literally just purchased them and actually came to our location, and I would train them and then give them the computers, put them in their vehicle. Even if you live 500 miles away and you're buying a few machines, that cost of travel for you would still be cheaper than what, I'm, what you'd be paying for shipping because I really protect these things when I ship them. So shipping cost is fairly expensive, about 80 to to $100 a machine if it's going pretty far here in the United States. Anyway, so to get back to the other thing, here is my little introduction story about Ethereum. Um, if you are on our Emerald Computers page, you click on ETH. Um, you also see this tools page right here. And this will give you all the programs that you need to download. I have my ETH miner file, which I just had right there with all the AMD drivers. I have a separate one for NVIDIA drive cards. NVIDIA cards have a couple different settings and a couple different DLL files. Um, you can get that there. You can also go to the official site and get the newest version if they have a newer version. Um, if your computer, you know, we usually put Windows 7 on these because Windows 10 likes to randomly reboot. And of course, you know, as I said about the fifth time, I don't like downtime, so I don't like to do that. So we'll usually load Windows 7 on these computers. And then we use this program called Never 10, which you can just download straight from there by clicking that link. And Never 10 will allow you to tell the computer to never upgrade to Windows 10. It just turns all the upgrades off, which is a cool thing. Anyway, let me show you the GPU. Uh, Z is another little program to get you all the information about your GPU. I believe I should still have that on here, GPU Z. Ah, I don't actually have it installed. Okay, I don't have it installed on this computer. It is on Gamma, so let me go and connect back over to Gamma. And then we can run GPU-Z. Ha. Ah. So GPU-Z is this little program right here. It just gives you details about your video card. How much RAM is it? What's the clock speed? Um, you know, this is made by MSI, it says right here. You know, it has, this one only has, oh, 4 gigs of RAM. 4096 memory size. Um, Radeon RX 480 graphics. So... It just gives you some basic information on your graphics card. Okay, next, we're going to talk about difficulty. Now, as I said before, it's like raffle tickets. So you want to know how many people are buying raffle tickets because 
they only give out the same amount of Ethereum every single day. So the more people who buy raffle tickets, the less money you're going to get. Now, if you look at this, since I started back, let's say, well, a long time ago, the Ethereum, the rate has really skyrocketed. Now we're up because so many people are getting into Ethereum. The rate is now 192 trillion, very large number. When I started, it was about 50. Um, I can't go that far back on this chart, um, but right here, as you could tell, you know, mid-November, it was 69, 68. Um, right here, uh, so right here, this little di it was actually a little bit higher before this, of over 100, but a crazy coin called Zeke came out, a Z coin, and it used the same technology as Ethereum, and a lot of miners switched over to Zeke, which was nice because it made the difficulty of Ethereum go way down. Uh, right here, you'll also notice this other huge drop. Ethereum was at 91 trillion, and a few days later, it's at 77. Well, what happened is that, remember earlier we showed you where it generated the DAG file? Well, what happened is right here on this date, like uh, just a couple days before Christmas, that DAG file got over 2 gigs of RAM, which instantly made, the second that DAG file did that, it made everybody who was mining with a 2 gigabyte video card, which obviously was about 15%, 20, maybe 16% of the market, it made all their computers stop mining. Um, I only had one computer as an experiment that had a 2 gig card in it. It stopped mining too. And they didn't all stop at the same time because different manufacturers in different settings might have had a little 1% difference. So somebody, some of them stopped on the 22nd, a couple on the 23rd, mostly on the 23rd, and a few were able to hold out to the 24th depending on the settings. Um, but by the 25th, done. Nobody was mining with that. And then you can see right here the difficulty kept going up. Uh, right around here, the price of Ethereum was only about eight to nine dollars, so people weren't really that excited. In early January, the price quickly went to thirteen dollars, and it stayed there for a while, and people were buying machines, and it takes a while, it takes about a week, week and a half, to from the time you buy your machine till you actually have your machine mining and making you money. So the difficulty usually lags a little bit, unless somebody's just switching from one currency to another. And as you can tell, the difficulty kept going up and up and up. Um, by the time we hit mid-February, the price was over 20 bucks. Um, now we're hitting March. You know, we're getting into the $25, $30 range. And now by into March, you know, we're hitting difficulty of 190 And the price of Ethereum is well over 40 bucks right now. So, okay. So that's the basics of how to mine Ethereum. Um, as I said before, the tools are here on my page. Um, I have a full guide that I wrote that goes into even way more depth uh, than the article that I'm talking about right now. Um, how to mine like a boss. And here is my little little bitty checklist. Shows you how to mine real quick. Uh, one thing that I do is turn on remote desktop, which you need is a username and password. Um, I like having my computers be remotely accessible. That's always a really, really nice thing. So let's see how long our video is so far. So, so far we're at 28 minutes. Okay. We're going to keep going. So now, obviously if you like this video, I'm going to be making about five more videos in this series. So if you want to subscribe to my channel, um, I just ordered five different RX 480 video cards. Uh, they're going to be in in a about three, four days. I'm going to do a whole roundup on how those cards compare to each other, which one's going to give you the best mega hash, um, the best ease of use, the best cooling. Um, I'll have that video up probably in a week or so. Anyway, now that you know about the how to mine for Ethereum right here, and we can look at my particular stats yet again. Ah, look at we got lucky right here. Very lucky. So, we're mining for Ethereum on the Payouts Rounds button. It also has this little part right here, Estimated Earnings. So based on the current difficulty of Ethereum and how much mining power I have, I should be getting 16 pieces of Ethereum per month. It takes me a little less than a day to earn one piece of Ethereum right now. 
Um, I'm probably going to, that's probably going to get a little bit, I have seven computers that are going to be going online here in the next day or two, but I also have 10 computers that I've in negotiations to sell right now. So I don't, I'll, you know, I'll be putting them more online. I'll be selling them. So my number fluctuates a lot. That's why mine's never consistent. Um, so that's about $722 I'm going to get. That's not pure profit. That is going to cost me probably $150, $170 in electricity. Um, I was up and running with actually 13 machines most of last month. And last year, I didn't have any mining machines, and my electric bill was $165 higher now than it was last year. But the electrical rates actually went up a little bit. So in reality, if you can take out that measurement, my actual cost of electricity versus mining for Ethereum and not mining for Ethereum is about $150. Now, to make even more clear, you if you're in a hot place like I am, Arizona, you also have to pay to cool um, whatever heat that those, those machines make unless you put those machines in an area where you don't care about. So I'm during winter, I use I put all the machines in my office and scatter them around my, my storefront and in various rooms so that I could actually heat my entire store with Ethereum rigs. I did not have to turn the heater on the entire winter. Um, but now it's getting hot. Today it was 91 degrees here in Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm in the process of relocating all of my Ethereum rigs, except for the ones that are actually in my server or in my home computer that I use all the time. I'm relocating them all to a warehouse, to the back of our warehouse, where I can just basically blow a fan on them. And um, that room pretty much gets to about 100 degrees during the summer. So... I've already tested these last summer. I put some machines out in a super hot area that got to 130 degrees. And with those kiosk machines with one video card, they never slowed down. I let them sit there for two weeks at 130 degrees. Perfect. So pretty happy about all that. So what do you do once you get this Ethereum? Well, I send my Ethereum to a website called Polynex. And this is Polynex right here. I don't have a lot of Ethereum right now because I sold some stupidly before. I had 70 a week ago, but now I'm down to only 46. Um, that's worth about yeah, somewhere around 2100 bucks at today's price. The price changes a lot. It goes up, it goes down. You know, If you're a miner, you don't really need to care too much about the price. I'm here for the long run. I don't really care what today's price is. I care about you know, the price is going to be a couple months from now. When Ethereum was at seven bucks, I just kept mining because I know I'm not going to sell it at seven. I'm going to hold on to it till it got higher. I did sell a little bit when it hit 23 because I, I needed to pay for some video cards and pay for electric bill and all that type of stuff. I like this to pay for itself as we go. So in here, you can actually go to the balances and then deposits withdrawals. You'll be able to see Anytime you've put money in or taken money out, um, now you'll be able to click on exchange. <clears throat> and when you click on exchange, right now, just in the last hour, there's been a lot of activity on uh, Polynex. The server is a little bit slow. So we're going to click on exchange. We're going to click on ETH to BTC. And you can click on a six hour time chart. And we went five minute wide little things. So you can see right here. It took a per the price of Ethereum versus Bitcoin went pretty far down. I mean, this is this is in a very large window right here. Um, it's rebounded quite nicely. If you want Ethereum versus the U.S. dollar, that also was taking a little bit of a hit. Um, if you look at the, just the last six hours, Ethereum was steady right around 47, 48. It went down. Some people were selling it, and now it's coming back up to 44. So. That sounds kind of fun. The nice thing I like about Polynex is that it has this thing called Trollbox, which you can click right over there, and then it gives you the box. And this box lets you chat with other miners about what they think is going on. Um, there's a lot of hype, a lot of fear, a lot of craziness, a lot of weird theories. Um, whatever you say, half the people are going to say you're crazy and... Um, half the people are going to agree with you. It's it's crazy. Um, 
you know, just take everything they say here with a giant grain of salt. But it is kind of fun, and you can kind of, um, you know, talk to people. They think it's, let's see, it says, don't trust the dead cat bounce. So dead cat bounces where something, they think something's dead, and it bounced up, even though they think it's dead. And so they call it, you know, if you see that called a dead cat bounce, that means they just think it's dead, and they're just talking like craziness. But anyway, um, you can see this all right here. And my name is Dragon, so I can hit hi, and it says Dragon. So if you ever see the word Dragon on there, just look me up. That's me. Um, we'll close that for now. So that's how you trade it. Now, what do you do with it? So the number one thing I do is I support a lot of nonprofit organizations in the Philippines. Um, we also have a little store there that we send money to. So what I do is on Polynex right here, I go and I convert a little bit of my money um, to Bitcoin. So you go right here, you're going to click on Ethereum, and I'm going to say I'm going to sell ETH. So if I want to sell, I want to sell one piece of ETH, and then I can type in what price I want to sell it for. So I don't really want to sell a piece of ETH, so I can type in, I'll just type something ridiculous, 0 0.049. So that definitely won't sell because it's actually never even in the history of Ethereum uh, received, got to a price that, that was that high. So I can hit sell. And then instantly it thinks about it for a second. Oh, they've been having a lot of difficult. So it's going to say I'm going to sell one ETH at that price. I hit OK. And now if the price gets there, even if I'm not online, it'll automatically sell my Ethereum for that price. Right here, I can say that's great. I want to hit cancel so that it doesn't actually happen. Though it doesn't really matter because it was so far away anyway. Um, while you can look right here, you can see people selling Ethereum right now live. So every couple seconds, you'll see a few new pieces. Here's somebody who sold 47 pieces of Ethereum. Someone sold 250 right here. You know, that's a lot of money. 200, 481 Ethereum, 17 Bitcoin. I mean, there's a lot of money going in and out of this. That's why you see such wide swings on Polynex. Now, Polynex isn't the only place you can buy and sell Ethereum. There's Bitrix. And Bitrix, you know, has all these different currencies. Here's their page about Ethereum. And then here's their Bitcoin uh, converter. Now, I'm, if, you know, so their price is a little bit lower. Um, you know, sometimes Bitrix will make the move first. Sometimes Polynix makes the move first. But in the world of trading between the Ethereum and Bitcoin pair, about 80% of all those transactions happen on Polynex. Everything else is minor compared to Polynex. Um, so anyway, now we're going to go and look at what I do with it. I use a website called coins.ph. And I convert my money on Polynex to Bitcoin. I send those Bitcoins to coins.ph. Coins.ph lets me cash it out directly to people I know in the Philippines. Um, this is how I fund my one of my businesses in the Philippines. And it makes money, and sometimes the profits from that money then get sent back to the United States. I can basically go, it's copy and order that we did earlier, click the button, and in literally 15 minutes, um, our friends over in the Philippines can walk into... Um, the bank, they go to one called Sabuano La Her right here. They just walk into Sabuano La Her. They show the author, it, this thing is based on their their cell phones. It sends them a text message. They show the little number on their text message and they're instantly given cash that quickly. It's nice. I really wish we had something like this in the United States. I know with the way to Wells Fargo ATMs are. There is a way to do some of what they're doing right here. And there are some ATMs that you can go out like in Vegas. And there's even a few here around the Phoenix area um, that you can do that with. Um, it also lets you buy cell phone load, which is load is like a name for like buying minutes. Um, you can buy that. You can. Um, this is set up really, really well. This per People who set up coins.ph did a really good job. Um, you, can, you can send and receive... Um, payments for your water bill and pay it all online, all with uh, Bitcoin. And you can receive money. Um, there are way more advanced. There's nothing like this yet in the United States. Um, but I would bet you we're going to go there. In the United States, people use this website primarily called Coin, Coinbase. 
the vast majority of money coming into or out of Bitcoin or Ethereum um, is through Coinbase. And you can see they, they, they'll do Bitcoin and they'll do Ethereum. That's the only two currencies you could trade here. And you can't even trade them between each other. You can only send and receive each one <laughs> directly with uh, cash. So you can go send re request. So I don't have any money in my Coinbase. I don't really use Coinbase uh, much. I do use it if somebody wants to buy a computer and I don't really trust them enough to run their credit card. I'll make them pay me in Ethereum or Bitcoin. I have them send it to Coinbase. Um, so far, I really don't cash it out of Coinbase. I just send it back over to Polynex. I can trade with it. Um, when you're on here, you can link it up with your bank account. So let's say send requests. So I'm going to send money. Let's just say I'm going to send funds. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Let's send two Bitcoin, whatever. Uh, that's how to send it. Okay, buy and sell. Sorry. So I'm going to say, let's say, I want to, so my limit's two and a half thousand bucks. I'm going to say I'm going to buy one Bitcoin. I can click the button. I, I don't know. So I don't want to do it right now. So this automatically will come right out of my Wells Fargo account into my BTC wallet. And it's going to take all the way till March 24th. They're going to charge me an $11 fee to do this. So not only is it slow, it's also expensive, about 10, about 1%. Um, so that's another reason why I haven't used it. But I mean, I'd much rather pay 1% to these guys than 3% over to PayPal. Um, <clears throat> the way that I usually have been getting rid of mine, if I'm not doing that, is I go to a website called Newegg, which is where I buy some of the video cards that I buy. Um, and on this website, when you check out, you actually have an option to check out and pay with Bitcoin. So it just gives you an address and say, you know, they want one point whatever Bitcoin and you just send that from your Polynix account and boom, you have video cards mailed to you. It's pretty impressive. So let's see, we're watching it go up and down. Eh. I never really look at the whole short term changes. It's just kind of cool to look at, but to me, I'm more about the long term. So the long term to me is, you know, hey, as I said before, it's stuck at 13 for a long time and now it's going way up. So now we're going to click on it right here. So here's where it was stuck at 13. Going up, going up, going up, going up. You know, and if you look at the whole entire chart, you can see it kind of did it before. At this last peak, when it right before it got there, honestly, I did sell all my Ethereum. I'm pretty happy I did so because only about three days later, um, there was actually a glitch in not Ethereum itself, but this other product called DAO, and it caused it to pretty much go down the half, and it literally took it six months, seven months to get back to where it was. So, you know, that was a major hit, but now we're way up here, so we're there. Okay. So we've covered most of the basics, how to mine, how to look up our website, um, how to trade Bitcoin, how to trade Ethereum, how to see how Polynex works, um, the difficulty of everything, uh, and how your etherminer.org website works. If you're interested in finding out more, obviously just go to emeraldcomputers.com slash Ethereum. If you'd like to buy an Ethereum rig from us, um, you could go to ethereumrigs.com and you could buy it right with Coinbase and you don't even need to talk to us to buy it. Um, but in reality, you know, just talk to me. We can make an awesome deal. I'll, you know, tweak the systems out for you. We'll build you a great computer. And if you want to, you know, however much mega hash you want to buy, we can build it for you. We can make it for you. So anyway, that being said, Thank you for watching this really long video, the longest YouTube video I have ever made by at least four times. <laughs> anyway, um, a lot of good information. Please just listen to it. I think in my mind right now, I think Ethereum is going to become more and more useful, literally 50% more useful every single month. And the amount of Ethereum that exists only goes up by less than 1% a month. 
So with, you know, that's the drag. So I can easily see Ethereum going up 30 to 40% in value every single month for the foreseeable future until something catastrophic happens, which hopefully never will happen. I mean, um, Bitcoin's been going up pretty quickly for a long time. I remember Bitcoin being 15 bucks. Now it's $1,100, $1,200. It hasn't been below 1000 for a while. Um, I can definitely see Ethereum um, becoming more and more popular. I, I don't see how Ethereum is not going to be above 100 bucks by the end of April. You know, this video is going to stay on the internet and I might be wrong and it'll prove me wrong if I am. Um, you know, by the end of summer, I'm hoping for 120, 150. Uh, by the end of the year, if more uses keep coming out for Ethereum, I can easily see 200. Um, which basically means if you buy a mining rig for a thousand dollars right now, it'll generate three Ethereum a month. And if that Ethereum turns out to be worth two hundred dollars, maybe a six months from now, a year from now, now you're making and you don't spend any of it, that thousand dollar investment is going to make you a couple thousand dollars between now and the end of the year. And to me, that's a no-brainer, which is why I'm constantly buying more machines. Um, I then sell the machines that I have built to other people, but every time I sell a machine, I try to build another machine as fast as I can, um, as long as the funds are there for me. Anyway, well, you have an awesome day, and thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, please share this video to other people who might be interested in it. Um, I hope to explain it. Now, I understand I'm probably going to get a lot of questions. So simply just comment on this video. I'm going to try at least once a day to log on to YouTube and answer your questions. I also, if you're interested in buying a machine, I have no problem talking to you on the phone about all your questions, um, getting you some answers, uh, getting, you, getting you exactly what you need. Well, thanks and have a good day.